Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about how not to be a lazy PC pilot. Um, see a lot of videos, watch a lot of videos from you know, people flying around the world. Um, and it's kind of twofold here, um, or, or, or more than that, you know, to be quite honest. Um, a lot of people that I see have gotten into the habit, and especially, you know, and, and I was the same way, uh, you know, just a PC pilot for the longest time, is um, always trying to put things into your gun sight, flying your gun sight. Um, you know, with the advent of track IR, VR, things of that nature, uh, and, and, and these are things that I find absolutely imperative now to have. There, there's absolutely nothing else, um, or, no, or no way I would fly without these things. Um, you know, a full set of controls, throttle stick, rudders, and, and a track IR of some sort, uh, with six degrees free, freedom of movement. Now, I know there's some of them out there that only uh, you know, do four ways of movement. Um, the sixth, for me, has now become an absolute uh, critical piece of the puzzle. Um, Learning to fly while keeping your eyes on a target and not necessarily keeping the target in your gun sight. Uh, as you can tell, I've just set up this little mission here with some transport planes. Uh, for new guys and new, and new guys trying to get used to track IR, I highly recommend that you go into the Google Mission Editor or Quick Mission and set something up to where all you do is fly around and just get used to flying around the targets, keeping your eyes on them the entire time. Don't worry about the front of your aircraft. It hasn't gone away. It's still there, trust me. But getting used to looking outside of your aircraft, not through the nose or through the gun sight. Okay, see, I promise it's, it's still there. It hasn't gone anywhere. The other thing is to learn to f fly Learn to use your controls to bring them toward what you're looking at. As opposed to continually flying from the nose and trying to keep your controls there. So we'll do a quick pass here. Okay, so now, whoops, what are we doing? We're looking off to the side again. Okay, we made a quick pass, we put them on our nose, that was it. Okay, and now again, we're going to look and we're going to bring our aircraft around smooth on the controls so that, that we're not losing too much airspeed and running ourselves into a stall situation by trying to keep pulling hard around to get the gun sight or to get the targets into the gun sight. Okay? Uh, the relational aspect between your targets and your vehicle is, is something that, that you really need to start understanding and, and doing something like this where you're just bringing them in ever so slowly, lining up a little bit. Okay, here we go, actually going to the zoom view. So I want to talk about that too a little bit. Notice that sight reticle when we zoomed in. It was big, right? It's also very, very sensitive. And I, I really hate games for doing this. When you use the standard zoom to zoom in like we just did there, your controls sensitivity is kind of amped up, so to speak. Okay, even though I'm using just small inputs, that that sensitivity is way up there. Okay. I do not use curves, I do not recommend curves if anything saturate your controls a little bit um, but it, it does depend on you know the, the controls that you're in but don't use curves because curves amplify at the end now you're going to see right there the difference between zooming in and leaning forward with track IR and that six degrees freedom of movement meaning that I can move forward and back and it's going to track it to zoom in excuse me to actually go into the gun sight view as opposed to the 
full zoom. Okay. Going into the gun sight view, you'll notice a couple of different things. The gun sight actually got smaller, making it a lot more accurate. But not only that, it was less sensitive to the controls, and I'm able to keep that gun sight on my target with much greater accuracy. So we're going to come in for another pass here. Side view. Now, again, just small movements on the controls. And if I were to put enough deflection in here, we would have been able to run all the way up all four of those targets. And also notice that I can still see both tips of my propeller, at least in this aircraft, which gives me good situational awareness, not just to my targets, mind you, but to horizon. Right? I have I have an understanding of the attitude of my aircraft in relationship to the horizon as well. Okay. So here again, we're, we're flying to our flying to where we're looking, and we're not trying to, you know, crank around so that we're just looking out of the gun sight because that's that's all we're comfortable with. Okay. So again, we're going to zoom in on target here and see how bouncy it is. Uh, even with small movements, it's very difficult to keep that sight reticle on our targets for its firing solution. And we're just going to roll around here. And again, this is part of, you know, not being lazy. Learn to turn your head. Learn to move around your cockpit. <laughs> A British guy in, uh, in uh, one of the videos I was just watching, they were talking about the difference between the split fire and the sea fire. Um, and the F3F, Grumman F3F, Wildcat. And he said the Americans could basically jump around uh, inside their cockpits if they needed to avoid fire. Uh, you know, the cockpit being so small. So again, we're going to go into our gun sight view. We're just leaning forward, and you can tell how much smoother it is and how, how much easier it is to, to put that on target, keep it on target, and not lose our situational awareness while doing so. So again, we're just going to make another lazy turn. You know, we're, we're keeping our aircraft speed up at the same time. We're, we're looking around, we're getting different views out of our, our plane. Understanding our relationship to the horizon as well as our targets. And we're not going to put ourselves in any sort of bad situation here by trying to constantly fly towards you know, uh, the gun sight. And we're not worried about stalling, losing energy, losing speed, or any of that. And here we go. Good shots. Simple pass. Good look around. And again, I highly recommend this for you know, people new to not only flying, but you know, new track IR, um, and just get used to flying, uh, you know, this, this fundamental, uh, this fundamental aspect of, of looking around, constantly keeping your eye on whichever target, you know, you want to or, or whatnot, but just not being lazy by trying to constantly keep your target in your gun sight. Do so. Do so. It, it is to your detriment. Yeah, I think we're going to make a quick pass here. And I am recording the audio after the video, mind you. Uh, so I think we're going to make a quick with the zoom view. Okay. We're going to look now. I'm not making a whole lot of control adjustments, but see how bouncy everything is. We're missing. We're missing. I really didn't set up that pass the greatest, but in other words, you can see the difference of how sensitive the gun sight is, how much bigger the gun sight is uh, in relationship to when you actually lean forward and look into the gun sight um, and, and the accuracy that, that you're able to produce, and especially in this next, next pass. But we're going to go into the gun sight view on the next pass and how long I am actually able to keep that gun sight on target 
how few rounds I have to expend to hit it, and how many rounds out of what I do expend actually hit the target. So we're in gun sight view, we lean forward here, we can still see our SA with the propellers. A couple of quick pops and that guy has been filled with lead. Now why he didn't go, or go down immediately. <laughs> So, again, you know, we're, we're getting comfortable with our aircraft, which is the whole point, you know, for, for newer guys to the, the flight sim community, but just looking around, getting comfortable with the fact that we can look outside over our wing. And we'll come in for another quick pass here, and then we're going to move on to DCS to, to basically show that, this, that they're, the, they're similar in, in both. So, another quick pass here into our gun sight view. Uh, you know, I, l I left the labels on so you can see the ranges and, and all that kind of stuff, so there you go. Good target, good hits, not expending a lot of ammunition, and it's just good practice. Again, you know, look back at our target, we'll see if he'll finally go down. And then we're going to move on to uh, DCS here real quick. Got a target out in front of us. zooming in, not trying to take away from my SA, understanding my energy in my aircraft in relation to my, my target and the horizon. And he's got to run to a turn here, we're going to look through the gun sight to see what that looks like. That is what the gun side view when we're leaning forward looks like in DCS. It's the same thing between the two sims. And again, you know, it's uh, just much better to use this as opposed to the zoom view. Now, getting the balance between the two, uh, you know, depending on, on uh, you know, what, what your setup is and how you actually like get your field of view, uh, you know, that's your thing, but here we go, we're going to zoom in, and you can tell, again, same with, with, with IL-2, the sensitivity in zoom, the actual zooming, is way different than it is, and here we're going to go into the gun sight, and you can see uh, the gyroscopic uh, sight, and how much less you're getting out of that with just very small inputs. Okay. Go back into a zoom view and you can see that things bouncing around and even with just the slightest, slightest inputs, it's pretty difficult to keep that thing in one spot. Okay. Go back out. Go back into our gun sight view. And how much less sensitive even on those small inputs, it is. You know, we actually end up with a shot, even though this guy's just running away. Running up, so. Anyway, guys, I hope it helps. And uh, keep your nose up, your wings low.